If you want more conventional wisdom on management, this podcast isn't for you. Throw away your so-called accountability. Throw away those 80s cliches. This is the On Purpose Management Podcast. Hello and welcome back to On Purpose Growth's On Purpose Management Podcast. And we're talking about a topic that that is pretty close to my heart, being uh, spending most of my career in sales management. Numbers were such an important thing to us. And the topic today is stop using metrics as a weapon. And all too often... All too, all too often, I see managers, I see leaders, I see owners using metrics as a weapon to command, to control, to threaten, to motivate their employees. And it just shows massive lack of understanding in what numbers and metrics actually mean. So that the purpose of today's podcast is to really challenge yourself, to really get dig deeper in, as a leader, as a manager of what numbers and what KPIs and what those statistics really mean and and how to use them. So I, I, I wanna dig into some of the current things and the current business practices that are, are really damaging companies. Uh, first and foremost, and I think most people, at least I hope most people have already accepted this, stack rankings are stupid. They are devoid of thoughts, uh, of any real thought, I should say, of any real management philosophy. The idea of ranking employees against employees and having internal competition means that you are going to suboptimize. Stop doing stack rankings. That's all I'm going to say there. But a couple other ways people use uh, metrics as a weapon, uh, quotas. We have a, a quota that you have to reach. If you reach the quota, you get extra money. If you don't reach the quota, you get punished. Oh, and probably you're going on a PIP or a performance improvement plan because you didn't reach quota. Uh, one that I've seen all too often as metrics as a weapon is going into pipeline meetings or weekly meetings or monthly meetings and having demands on how many how many people, how many prospects, or how many dollars they put in a sales pipeline. And we're going to talk in a little bit about why that's a weapon and why that's really damaging. And activity demands. How many business cards did you collect? How many people did you meet? How many, how many phone calls did you make? Those those activity demands, those are metrics as a weapon. These are just some samples from the world of sales. These, these metrics as a weapon are not used in sales. I've seen them all across the board. How many hours did you work? Guess what? That's metric as a weapon. Uh, how many story points if you're an agile development team did you cl complete? I can't believe that anyone tried to do agile and started doing that kind of shit. It's just dumb. And so many of those those type of things happen all for this, the purpose of this podcast, though. We're going to focus in on the sales ones just because everyone kind of is, is aware of those and they're pretty easy to use and, and debunk. So I want to I want to talk about what happens if you use metrics as a weapon and the the results of this bullshit methodology. And if you do this, employees have three three options. They have three choices when you're using metrics as a weapon. First, they're going to start distorting the system. And what I mean by that is they're not going to follow standard operating procedures. They're not going to act in the best interest of the company. They're, they're going to start cheating what everyone has agreed to. And when I tell people this, the first thing they tell me is, why is that bad? Why is it bad if an employee goes outside the system or outside the process to create better results? And what I tell people is, is it, I guess it, it's not necessarily always bad, but it depends on how they cheat the system. So I'm going to give you an example. I was working with a client of mine, and they were getting really frustrated. I was, I was brought in not on the sales side, but on the operations side because their, their customer engagement team, their client engagement team was really struggling to have any type of customer satisfaction. They were a software as a service firm. They had a big consulting group that went in and worked with customers directly, and the scores and the assessments of both the implementation and the, the, the consulting teams were really, really low. And so I was brought in to, to problem solve here and to create a new system. Well, as we dug in with these teams, we, we didn't notice many errors they were making. And they were doing above and beyond what their expectations were. So the next step was we actually started looking at the customer and client contracts. And invariably what was happening is there was a lot of details that weren't in the contracts, but the clients and customers were saying was promised to them by the sales team. And people say, oh yeah, sales has to do whatever they have to do to close the deals. 
but this is an example of cheating the system. And the sales team consistently went outside and created all of this variation and handed it to implementation and consulting services, the client services, client engagement, and they had to fix it. But because the sales team had to cheat and work outside the system or distort the system, we couldn't plan for it. So the customer engagement, the implementation, the customer satisfaction, whatever it's called in your department, if these are one-offs, if these are done outside of normal protocol, they can't plan for it. So they can't design a process, a group, a division that handles the variation if they're not told what the variation is, if there's no plan to handle that variation. So that this is a perfect example where the sales team had a quota they had to do what they had to do to meet the quota because of what management was doing. So they worked outside the system. And invariably, that company was really struggling because they had such high churn. And the answer couldn't be solved. It wasn't going to be solved with more consultants or more customer servants people or anything like that. The problem was is that the sales team were being motivated and managed to cheat the system to meet their quota. This also hid, when they distorted the system, it also hid and distracted from any chance of improvement. Because they were hiding where the problem was, they were actively distorting the system and cheating the system, the company couldn't make the correct adjustments in marketing and in sales and in production to grow the company. So it, it was just, a, it, was, it wasn't the salesperson's fault. They were doing what they were forced to do by a bad management policy of using quota as a weapon. The second option that teams have and people have, individuals, employees have, when you use weapons as a, met, as a, when you use metrics as a weapon, is they distort the numbers. And this is easiest seen in any pipeline meeting you've ever sat in. If, if when you sit in a pipeline meeting, there is an activity demand or a, a how much dollars you're putting in the pipeline demand, then the best way for, for employees to stay employed while they look for another job is to lie to you about what's in the pipeline. And they're getting really, salespeople are really, really good at this because of the weapons that management is putting into place. Again, this is not an employee problem. This is a management problem. The employees lying is a direct result of the management policies put in place by having minimum requirements on pipeline and activity. So how does this look? You're sitting in a pipeline meeting. We put everybody's numbers on the board, and everybody goes, well, you're not adding enough to your pipeline, so next week all of a sudden they've added the perfect amount. But most of it's bullshit. It's a lie. It's filler. It's fluff. So the, the lie keeps the person employed while they're looking for another job. Meanwhile, the company who has this requirement can't do the proper coaching. They can't help them. They can't diagnose the reason why this employee is not getting the numbers and not adding people to the pipeline. So they're not actually getting the benefit of that employee. And worse yet, they're starting to do their forecast and their planning against a pipeline that is complete and utter bullshit. So these distort the numbers. These lies have great impacts on the company. And it's because, and it's only because, leadership and management has used metrics as a weapon. Instead of working hand-in-hand -hand with their team, instead of working side-by-side -side with their team, they have basically said, if you don't put this amount in the pipeline, you're going to be fired. And if you do put this amount in the pipeline, you get a reward. So guess what? There's no choice. There's no chance. There's no will or want to say, hey, look, I'm struggling to get that in there because the real fix is going to take weeks, maybe months to come in the door to get in that pipeline. And in the meantime, the employee knows they're going to get fired. So it's just a really dumb methodology to have these demands and these activity demands and the pipeline demands. So that the third option that employees have when they, when they need to change the numbers is to go to work and improve the system. However, if you're using metrics as a weapon, such as quota or putting people on PIP or pipeline demands or you're, not, you're fired if you don't meet with 20 people and bring back 100 business cards, if you're doing things like that, the employees don't have a chance to surface these issues, to do problem diagnosis, to, to do testing on what a solution possibly is because they don't have the time to do that. So we want people to improve the system. However, the management policies of using metrics as a weapon is keeping us from being able to ask our employees to do that. So in other words, when you use the metrics in this way, when you use the metrics as an end-all, be-all, what happens is, is you're influencing your employees to lie to the customers, you're influencing the, the employees to lie to management, 
and you're taking away that any chance or any opportunity that they can come to you honestly and openly with a problem so that it can be fixed. Now, as you guys know, I, I never just sit on a current problem. I always talk about direct action steps. The first thing that, that we have to do if we, wa we want to take action steps to do a better way of management, a better way of leadership, is we have to understand that numbers are a snapshot. They are a picture. They are not the only thing that represents reality. So the mindset has to shift that if one person got five meetings and another person got three meetings, that doesn't mean that the person that got three meetings is worse off. What that means is, hey, they got three meetings and the other person got five meetings. That's it. That's all it means. There's nothing to infer from that information. You need more than one metric. You need more than one, one data point. You need it over time. And then you need to understand that even if over time one person's doing more, there's more variables. So when you're looking at metrics, you need to control for how many different variables. You need to control for the context. Data outside of context has no meaning. If you take one thing from that, this podcast, take that. Data outside of context has no meaning. Meaning. And so take meetings, for instance. Somebody gets 10 meetings every week and one person gets five meetings every week. That data is out of context. You need the story, who they're meeting with. Why are they meeting with them? What do those meetings represent? And all of the other things. Are they in the same territory? Are they targeting the same people? I can go on and on with these other variables. This is not to say metrics are useless. The next step in this change is once you, once you agree that data outside of context has no meaning, the next step is then how do you start taking action on any data? Didn't I just say data outside of context has no meaning and we pointed to a bunch of KPIs that everyone uses? Well, guess what? You need to start understanding things and the thing that we need to look at is the difference between signal and noise the difference between common cause variation and special case variation. And to do that, you don't need a PhD in statistics. You need to go on YouTube and look common cause versus special cause. Go do that now, and you're going to get it. You'll, you'll get so many videos that are so much better than this podcast at educating you at when you need to take action on data. The last thing that, that I want to emphasize here is metrics should not be used as a tool or a weapon. They should be used as a form of improvement. And the form of improvement can't be an attack on an individual if you want it to actually work. So we need to change the questions that we ask even after there's a special case. And those questions should go from, why are you? Why did you do this? Why you? Why you? Why you? And they should turn to, what are we going to do about it? What, is the root, what are the root causes what is keeping us from changing these numbers? What is getting in your way of producing better results? What can I do to help you? And, and those type of questions that take the pressure off of the individual and point it towards the context. The context is 94% responsible. I'm not making that statistic up. Somebody else made it up well before I did. But if you adopt the theory that the system and the context is 94% responsible for the result, then you should start looking at the idea that the system, the context, the process, all of the things that are outside the individual's control are 94% responsible, which means that's where you should look for the problem because you have a higher probability of finding the issue. So instead of asking why you, ask what can we do? What is the step to change this? If an employee is struggling and the metrics aren't good and you ask why you, why you, let's put you on a performance improvement plan. Let's focus on what you're doing wrong. You're going to get people that lie to you, that lie to the customers. However, if you take the question of, holy cow, this isn't working, what can we do to fix it? What can we look at? What can I help you with? What can I remove as an obstacle for you? What can I give you as an added resource to change these things? Then you're going to get some start, start getting some problem solving. You're going to have an opportunity to go and improve the system, which is what we want our employees to do. Not only are you giving them more motivation to improve and change, you're giving them more motivation and you're giving them the reason and the opportunity to be honest. And without that, without that opportunity, you can't solve a real problem. You're just going to fire people and you're going to do it consistently. Stop using weapons as, stop using metrics as a weapon and instead of use them as a tool for investigation. Thank you. I appreciate you being with us. We're trying to get a lot of information to you fast, and all we ask in return is don't keep us a secret. 
if if you thought this was great, if you thought this was terrible, if you think there's somebody that should listen to us, give us a comment, send us a note. We're at onpurposegrowth.com. Reach out to us, pass this on. Thanks for listening to the On Purpose Growth Podcast. Let us know what you thought in the comment section. For more from On Purpose Growth, go to onpurposegrowth.com. Subscribe here at BLTV for all of our content, including the daily Learn About Law podcast, Seize Your Business, Making Real Estate Fun, and Logical Logistics podcast brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Thanks for listening.